Hi, Jamie here. If you're listening to this, I'll let you know that this is part two of a two-part podcast. And whilst you could carry on listening without listening to podcast one, it definitely would help if you went back and listened to that first. Because quite a lot of what we talk about in part two relates to context and background provided in part one. And it would also start halfway through a quick fire question round, which would sound odd if you'd not listened to part one first. So pause this one, go back, listen to part one, then come back here and carry on enjoying. Wayne, how long does it take to get ready in the morning? About 25 seconds. See, I don't think the guys agree with you. <laughs> no, no, seriously, shower, brush my teeth, go on. Well, I'm, 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 I'm three hours of prep with coffee first. <laughs> so, yeah. Paul, um, describe yourself in three words. Oh, oh you got to talk about that. Well, you describe yourself in one, and the other two can give you one each. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, uh, Organised. <laughs> right, Wayne, describe your horse. OCD. Yeah, yeah. OCD, okay. No right foot. <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe you went there. Everyone describes me as that, yeah, yeah. Um, Paul H, qualifications, experience, or personality? Personality. Yeah, good man. Um, Wayne, if there's a spider in your house, do you kill it or set it free? Oh man, people with different opinions. I want to say set it free. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, well, I move into another room until it's moved out. My, my response was the same when I got asked that. I said, I do nothing. I stand there paralysed with fear until yeah. somebody comes in and saves me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just going to another room. You can have that. <laughs> and then, and then you're not living in a cupboard and there's a spider in every room in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepy oh. room. <laughs> Last one for Paul, and this is another hard one. Maybe if you had one superpower, what would it be? Have a right foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, have a right foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, just probably, I don't know. Um, no, I'm scared of bites. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flying level low. Well. Uh, Invisibility, super strength. Supporting Man United. No, no, probably invisibility, yeah. There we go. Invisibility. Um, yeah. It's a bit creepy, that, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually. I've said it, yeah. <laughs> Cheers for that. <laughs> bit creepy. I'll set him up and then Wayne calls you out for it. You're yeah. <laughs> awesome, guys. I like doing that with three people. That works really nicely. <laughs> you can all just rip each other and say, rubbish! <laughs> You didn't get your hardest ones there. Yeah, I was like, I was asking it's the same questions. Yeah, I did ask you that. Which name is called? The cast. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, we warmed up. No. I don't know. Yeah, take it down a level now, Wayne. So I think to kind of move into the second half, but what I wanted to do is maybe just wrap up a little bit around more of the kind of the football side of things. Um, so, so firstly, where's the best place for people to go to find out all about either I'm a person who would love a game of footy in my area, how can I find out what you guys are doing, or I'm a, an organisation or a partner who loves that kind of model and would love to chat more. Where can they go to find out more about you? We're just in the process at the minute of um, <clears throat> we've got um, some brilliant support from a, a company in Darwin called Gel Clear. Um, and Emma at Gel Clear is currently designing as a website that will include absolutely everything um, that we're doing. Um, but in the meantime, it's just kind of um, Twitter, Facebook, um, just on the individual blokes, girls, and social inclusion football league accounts. So we are going to move it all into one one place. But for now, if you if you have a Google of those things, you'll see your Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Might even show one of them after, because I think we want to talk about something on there a bit. Um, and I think just one, I, I keep saying one kind of final bit on this. So I think you've talked loads about the various things that you guys do that make this, that, that 
help this work for people who might not ordinarily get involved in stuff. But I think there's also a few other, there's lots of other things I think that goes into making that kind of thing work. And it might be nice just to really quickly touch on a few of them before we move on. So I'm, I'm thinking um, things like the way that in the past you've tried to advertise a session that you've got and using the language, which I'm assuming you guys still do, of, of don't be on your Todd. Uh, and you've shown me posters before that have not mentioned anything about mental health. They've not had a badge on it about any organisation. It's almost just been like, don't be on your Todd. Come and have a game of footy at this place at this time. So I think there's stuff like that that you guys do that I think an awful lot of people and partners could learn from. Whereas don't be in a rush to put your badge and your logo on that thing. Because that one thing, that might be the thing that puts somebody right off. So are there other things like that that you guys can think of that you think that's the thing that makes this work for people where normally in the past maybe it hasn't? I think um, when, when people talk about mental health, um, especially professionals, um, organisations, um, and you kind of get these kind of anti-stigma campaigns, um, I... From a personal point of view, I just think that creates even more stigma. Um, and like you say, kind of like the, the use of, of, of certain language um, isn't relatable to a lot of people. Um, so things like don't be on your Todd, we, we were, I mean, we really thought about that, didn't we? And, and um, I, don't, I don't know. I think... Um, Again, going back to what we were saying earlier, um, just by talking to people um, and, and kind of um, putting ourselves into someone else's shoes, um, you know, or if you're in a care setting, um, you see some bad practice in a care setting, you know, would you want your son or daughter to be treated like that? You wouldn't. Um, would you want your son and daughter or mother or father spoken to like that? You wouldn't. So all these things that we, you know, you constantly need to think about and, and just kind of, kind of give somebody what they want without all the baggage around it and all the kind of connotations around it. Um, and I, I do, I feel, I do feel really strongly about some of, um, some of the campaigns that I see around mental health, I don't think that that helpful on a personal level. Um, I think it, it just kind of makes things worse a lot of the time. Um, but that is that is just a personal opinion. It's not um, you know anything more than that. Um, but I, I do think language is really really important. And I think just the one thing you said there, where and it's something we try and do a little bit in TAF, and we're trying to help. So we work in a lot of these professional fields trying to help other people understand how, how the use of language or how the use of dress or demeanour or anything, smiley faces, can make yeah. people feel. And I think when you said you put a lot of thought into don't be on your Todd, I think it's, it's that thought that is the difference between some of these things working and not. Because somebody could have just said, oh, that was just a throwaway line, that. It's yeah. like, no, I can imagine you guys sitting there going, what is the right thing here to try and put them yeah. really carefully? to make sure there was nothing in there that could be a little bit, you know what I mean? I think it's thought and care into stuff like that that's a massive thing that maybe not professionals don't always think about. Yeah, yeah, I just want to say, um, obviously, you know, we're all individuals and stuff like that. Again, going in that, you know, like you say, in the organisations, uh, sometimes, just adding on to what Paul said, they can create a bubble so it's right, right. It's only for people with mental health. That is it. Well, what about them people progressing, coming out, getting support that you, you both mentioned about educating and stuff like that, or people that don't understand it or don't want to accept it or not face it or admit it. So while all these sessions, because like I say, going to them organisations, but no, this is it. Not for, well, the sessions are different. So might be, you know, or the leagues are different and stuff like that, whatever level or stuff like that. But I feel, again, going on to what Paul said, these organisations can create that bubble and in the long run, it's not really helping because 10, 15 years down the line, then people have, have not progressed anymore or built up, you know, the only, the only new people are meeting is when, 
<laughs> God forbid something happens and then someone else will come and replace them. Do you know what I mean? Because it seems to be the same people moving forward and you don't be on your tod and you know you see it on people's organisations and stuff like that and everyone's different but some is no referral required. Well, do you have to put that on? Do you know what I mean? Do you have to put that no referral required or do you know what I mean? Them, them think that it just, just really grates me because them people who if you put mental health there, then people that really do need that are going to go, but what if someone sees me going there? It's all over social media. They'll think I'm mental. Do you know what I mean? So it's having that thought and taking... Well, maybe maybe they mean mental health when I've got to be a score 7 out of 10 and I'm only a 6, so maybe I'm not really that. I, yeah, I see something years ago at a football tournament, years ago, and he was a good little player, and someone's family member went, can they prove he's got mental health? Can they prove he's got... Yeah, I've got a certificate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and stuff like, and that's going to that perception about someone being good at football. You don't play football like you've got mental health. No, because I've got broken legs. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know, and stuff like, and that's that perception. Just yeah, I just wanted to add to that really. Yeah, I mean, I can give a, a another example of um, around about eight years ago, we had um, the, so the social inclusion football league originally was was a mental health league um, because that was our contract within the borough was, was mental health um, and then we changed it to social inclusion which meant we could invite more teams in from different services whether it was homelessness substance misuse um, and one of the one of the original teams that was a mental health service um, pulled out because they only wanted to play with people who had mental health problems so it's almost like kind of completely mm -hmm kind of reversed the kind of it, I, I was absolutely stunned and it was the social worker in charge of that team that made that decision and I, I absolutely blew me away um so the, you know the kind of stigma around mental health kind of works both ways it, you know it's it's not healthy at all um, I'm, I'm kind of lost for words really but when that happened it was, it was really but, but I think what's What's important, and I think this is why we're trying to do, this is why I wanted to do the podcast, this is why we're trying to kind of support you guys a bit to try and start getting more of this mindset and approach out there. Because actually, even if we're, even if we're not sure people should necessarily need it, more thinking and helping people understand the reality of this, the more we can get out that out there, the more we can start kind of helping professionals remove some of those barriers we've talked about, the more you can have these kind of conversations or, or help a service design their next promotional thing that is far less stigmatised and much more inclusive. I think what you guys do and the mindset that you've got with this and just the humanistic way you approach it, I think, is something that we absolutely want to try and get out there as much as we can. And that's why we've been talking to you recently about how we can make sure that we're learning from what you guys do and trying to help apply that in other areas, regardless of football just about being good people and trying to do things for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah you say, Jack, uh, I'm sorry, just keep writing me out. I'm sorry to talk okay. in, boys. Um, just write it. Uh, I think we're quite fortunate to have worked with a service, a hospital, that because of this approach has changed the way they work. And I'm not saying it's because of, you know what I mean, about how it is, you know, about that bridging the gap and actually set up a recovery team, you know, and really come out and do things that have never been allowed because it's like the old fashioned way. And it's, it's scary change. You know, there's that risk, positive risk taking, because that's what it is, it's a positive risk take, but it's to the extent where, you know, it's, it's the numbers they've got come in to session to other things, because then that opens them up to try it at other places now. And you're seeing it, it's changing that, and it's no coincidence that more people are being discharged from that place that have ever been discharged. Who, if, it, if it's cool to, who's that? Cause it feels like they deserve a name check for taking a bit of a, a risk and, and trying yeah, to... Yeah, the management and uh, recovery team at Kemple View. Kemple View? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, again, worked in mental health services in the past, I think, you can imagine that being a big, bold move away from what they would normally do. I think that deserves some credit. We don't, don't we all? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're the leading. They're, they've been, they've been talk, doing talks themselves now all over the country because right. they're, they're the leading light to stop that revolving door. 
you know, we've, we've got to find ways, haven't we, where we can ch change the way the system works and work in a more collaborative, more holistic um, way where we're treating people just as people rather than putting them in these specific boxes. And, you know, that, that story about the, 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 the team that decided it wasn't niche enough for them to be involved in the league is, like you say, it's just, it's just totally outrageous, isn't it? In, in the sense that... Well, you laugh, but in like a heartbreaking kind of way, don't you, really? And we, you know, and something you said earlier, Wayne, which, which we all know is, you know, you talk about, you talk about a group of people who might be struggling with mental health challenges. Well, j just put the whole human family into that box because at, at some point in our lives, who isn't to a to greater or lesser degrees, we all face some of those challenging moments. Um, and of course, you know, your heart breaks for people who, who find it more difficult. But the reality is that you know we need to, we need to get to a place where where we're not talking about physical health or mental health or you know heart health or anything else we we need to try and figure out how we're going to work together within our places to just help people to be healthy of of body mind and everything else and to be happy and to be whole if you like and and i think it's you know it's really some of the things you've touched on there are just about the way of, you know the use of language has really come through really strongly all these different elements almost like um, really good ingredients that would that someone could take away and think, actually, I need to approach this in a different way. And, 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 and the stuff you're doing with, uh, was it Kempel View? You know, we need to explore that a bit more and, and talk to them and see what, see what other organisations can learn from their approaches. But, um, you know, I, I think that's a really important point around this mental health, that it's just healthy, isn't it? And it's everybody. We're all, we're all in it together um particularly this kind of coronavirus pandemic age um that we're living in now you know this is really important that we start to think about each other just just in through a lens of kindness and understanding and empathy and recognizing that everyone's facing challenges in in different ways so i'm, I'm mindful that um as we expected our timekeeping has gone somewhat awry <laughs> We'll, we'll blame the extensive quickfire questions that you guys couldn't, you know, get off. Uh, but I think what we really want to touch on a little bit, and, and, and again, probably give, give you guys a chance to talk about some of the things you're doing, but also because actually that might help other people think about what they could do. So as Ken alluded to there, you know, currently going through the situation of, of you know, social distancing and being a little bit not able to do some of the connecting stuff, uh, and specifically for you guys, you know, where you'd normally have organised big football group sessions and actually at the moment and who knows for how long you're not able to do that. But I know that you guys have been doing a lot of other stuff to try and help people still feel connected to something, still feel part of something. I thought it might be nice just for you to kind of touch on some of those things and share some of that so that people can get a feel for what the kind of things that can still happen. Yeah, um, <clears throat> the Cholly Community Foundation, the first one, is the Zoom calling. Um, so, basically, you don't have to have been a participant. Anyone's welcome. Um, basically, on a Wednesday night, we do a football quiz, 7 to 8, um, for blocks. And then we move it to a Friday night as well. Um, but it's, a, it's open to everyone. So, we have partners on, women on, um, tea, you know, teams within the household. And that's more general knowledge. Uh, so that's another way. So twice a week we're doing calls. We're having people that haven't come to sessions before but are connecting through Zoom, which is good. So they're meeting people. Um, and obviously when the sessions are back up and running, it's obviously a lot easier for when they come to the sessions. And then, um, well, we've done a bit, and we were Butler's Arms. Um, we did um, food parcels and gifts. And we went out and delivered them. And... I don't know the organisations that come and help us deliver, but there was a lot of people involved in that. It was it was really big. It wasn't five or six food parcels. I think it was over 50 odd, and then so many toy ones for kids. Um, we also did a, off our back, we did the Easter eggs at Easter. So we dropped in for service users or participants, just to uh, drop them an egg at the door, had a five, ten minute chat with them, um, just checked in on them, and put, really perked people up. We also did um, from Kyle Riley, one of our participants that come two years, I don't, two years ago, I don't think he's only missed like one session. Um, he's like a volunteer. Yeah, Kyle, yeah you know Kyle, Kyle, don't you? Yeah, everyone knows who Kyle is when you've met him. Um, it was his idea. Uh, he's not, he's not, he helps us, he's a volunteer. Um, it was his idea about um, someone, unfortunately, 
took the life of um, a motorway bridge. So it was his idea to maybe get the community involved by getting them to draw pictures up with the kids. Um, so a bit of a home activity for people. Um, and then we would get them, laminate them, um, 5,000 hole punches in them and basically decorate the bridges. Um, yeah, we haven't managed to do all of them. We didn't realise how many bridges there was, but I think we covered 17 on Saturday um, with a good 16 or so pictures on. Uh, and the, um, the feedback we've got and obviously the involvement of the community. We have people that have never been to any of our sessions, not even interested in football. Um, participate in this with the families and with the kids and um, we had people on Saturday come to help with the kids that actually decorated and um, done the artwork sorry so yeah it was re really good obviously socially um, distant but um, distancing but um, yeah it was really this, yeah this is a video of the day so just so whilst you were chatting I just kind of oh, sorry I didn't mean to have the volume on then but I thought well you can kind of have it running so this is the. Yeah, um, sorry, go on, Paul. Yeah, this is this is basically we told everyone that obviously do it safely, do not put yourself in danger. But the important one was to take a lot of pictures. I think we got over two hundred pictures, all the pictures on actually on it. Um, so we decided to do a video of it, which is um, I think we've had like seventy odd shares just on Facebook. Um, it's reached out to over five and a half thousand at the minute, which is really positive. Um, if anyone wants to watch it, it's on our Facebook and Twitter, and you can also find it on my personal Paul Davis um, YouTube. Uh, it's on there as well. Um, yeah, it, I think I think if you watch it, it's a bit. It's quite a heartfelt video, um, and yeah, and it, obviously it's a memory of a, such a positive day, and hopefully it helps people, or even makes someone smile that's walking past with a dog walking. You know, that's, that was the idea. It was like a feel good factor mm. for the community. Perfect. I think it's, and I think I would encourage people to go and check out your Facebook page because, like I said, all the things you just described there are kind of shown on there. Um, you know, I think the, the Zoom quizzes, I think, you know, stuff like that, it's, it's something simple. But, you know, I think what you, like you say, what you're also doing there potentially is for those people you might not have met through football yet, but you are creating a relationship, they are seeing your face. So maybe when it's time when we're allowed to do this stuff again, you might be getting, hopefully, quite a few new faces down there who kind of, you know, I came to a Zoom quiz, it was great fun, I came and had a game of football with you as soon as I could. It's... Yeah, I think it obviously it passes time, the Zoom quizzes and stuff, but it's also another way of knowing that, because it is a hard time for everyone, I think all three of us have struggled at some point during this two, three months, but I think it's just to show that there's someone is there for you, that they know that they can access our support still, um, even if that's through phone calls and messaging. Um, but yeah, it's just knowing that I think there is people there and there is support. Um, and it's not nice, but obviously everyone's having the struggles at the minute. So it's, it, it's not nice, but obviously you know you're not alone. Like we're all going through it, basically. So I think one thing before we kind of draw it to a close, maybe. And, um, uh, well, I'd to say over to you, Paul, but really it kind of could be any of you, I suppose. It's... What I do know is obviously the, the 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 kind of starter for this model is you talked about Wayne, the Blokes United bit, but really the Social Inclusion Football League and the Blokes United and Girls United, correct me if I'm wrong, but was mostly initially focused in the Blackburn with Darwin area. And that's where you'd kind of had a couple of leagues going as well as your social inclusion league. But talk about a little bit about your plans for what's what you what you're hoping to do next and, and how you're hoping to try and grow this a little bit. Um Obviously, we're we, we're governed by <laughs> ever-changing guidelines. Um, I think initially we're looking at well, we're just waiting for the green light really to to resume um, our daytime sessions um, uh, by just doing one-to-one -one sessions. Um, we just before the lockdown happened, we just um, we'd got a launch date for. Um, a new Blokes United at Lango FC. I think it was due to, to launch on the 26th of April and obviously yeah. um, we, we couldn't do that. So that's, that's all in place to go when, it, when the time's right, when it's safe to do so. Um, and I think our next... So that kind of covers Ribble, Ribble Valley area, I guess, Lango. Um, and I think... 
Hindburn, um, with the support of um, Glenn Harrison, uh, uh, for one, um, who was who's a local councillor. Um, so yeah, Blokes United in Hindburn and Lango would be the next two that we're looking at. Um, we're, we're just waiting. We're just kind of patiently waiting to, to get cracking, really. But but ultimately, what you hope, well, no, what you are doing and are looking to do is, is try and get these happening all over the place. Through, throughout all of all of East Lancashire. Um, I mean, we, you know, and even beyond that, to be honest, um, you know, with with Blokes United, with Girls United, and with the league, you know, we've kind of travelled all over England for, for tournaments um, and and kind of built up some amazing networks with professional football clubs. Um, so yeah, Lancashire first, and then the world. Who knows? <laughs> This time next year, more than me. This time next year. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had messages off people asking, "Will will blocks in out be return and stuff?" And obviously, I've replied, "But yeah, it will be, and it'll probably be bigger, better, everything." Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll just only hopefully imp- will only improve, and hopefully it'll thrive. Yeah, that's just that's what, what these two have said really in these in these times. Um, no matter what you've got, it's quite a level playing field. Uh, whether you sat in a four bedroom top job, do you know what I mean? All of a sudden being at home around your family, which again, you can look at it in every type of view where you think someone's on their own, they're really struggling more than somebody or something like that. But yeah, there's someone that they're all on top of each other with kids running around who don't understand, no matter how much money you've got, it's difficult for everybody. And saying they're reaching out, we're probably getting more calls and messages now, and again, off. Friends that have never accessed things, it's normally the phone you up to ask you how you're doing, but it's a two way thing, isn't it? How are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Not in a Fonzie type way, but uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, and that, that's what he's seeing, and uh, it's showing that resilience. And the lads around us were quite fortunate in that thing. We've got lads because it could be too much. I mean, Paul's here every day of the week. It's pretty difficult because obviously everyone says social distancing and we've not been able to see the crowd. Paul's doing the bits and bobs, taking people for injections and stuff like that. This is going on. And obviously, this, you know, you're speaking to people. Sometimes your phone, you've got to think of your own health as well. Because it's difficult. Mm. You can just have your ear, can't you? And stuff like that. Uh, like Paul said, well, at times we don't want to turn the light on. No, if, <laughs> if anyone is... Struggling on e-support. We are operating through our Facebook and Twitter like nine till five. Um, we could just message. Um, obviously, we have the Zooms, which is seven o'clock at night. If people want to access them, but obviously we have to do it nine till five, Monday to Friday. But we can obviously um, organise. I don't know a chat if people want to chat over the phone. Um, yeah. Real. Um, right. So keep an eye on Facebook. Look out for the next Bloke United coming soon to an area, hopefully near you. And if you if you need a chat, then get in touch with you guys because you guys are awesome to chat to. Yeah, that uh, what is it? Socially distancing, but we're not socially distanced. Someone was saying so. You should really nice. take the Fab. Right. Thank you. Um, there's there's a few things we haven't touched on today, which we we can't just for time and stuff like that. But I think you know the stuff that you guys do. Um, which again, there's loads of learning for everybody. So that the way you try to look for local community businesses and things that can support you with regards to little bits of funding, or I know you know places like the Butler's Armors, others opening up their venues for you guys to come to. I think that element of your model is amazing because it gives you a real community spirit from that place and makes it feel owned and, and gives it a chance of lasting. You know, when when seed funding might kind of finish and stuff like that. I think there's all manner of stuff in your models that I think is, is amazing, really, that we've not had a chance to touch on. Um, yeah. but we've got loads, Jamie, of them little pockets that are open us at the Penamwish. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. That's yeah. to say, just a shout out to all of you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I know on your Facebook page you've got a few kind of showing up on there, so check that out, people. And I think, you know, there's all manner of stuff we could go talk about in, in how you guys approach things that I think could, could work for lots of other areas that can take a lot of learning from. Uh, and maybe who knows we'll do another one of these in the future but in the meantime check you guys out hopefully your website will come sometime soon and then you can see all of these things together in one
yeah. Yeah. Just uh, quickly, Jamie, um, we're, we're decorating a shed at one of our supported living projects. So if anyone's got any paint, it'd be brilliant. Okay. <laughs> I, want it, I want it painted in rainbow colours. Okay. I think we've got yellow and blue at the minute. Have you, have you got a, a specified type of paint? Does it need to be an outdoor paint? Is it a glass yeah, or matte? Yeah, an outdoor paint. Yeah. An outdoor paint. Yeah. Okay, there you go, the extra detail. Okay, you don't, you don't have loads of like matte indoor wool, but you can't do anything with <laughs> it. If any one of the three people who listen to this podcast have any paint, then... <laughs> hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> this is just for us. Too much. Too much. <laughs> Uh, wicked. So um, I'll just wrap up and then we'll hand over to you guys um, to have the final final thought. If that's, is that okay? Ken, is there anything that you want to kind of touch on before I do so, mate? I just wanted to say thank you to the guys. I you know, really love the kind of genuine down-to-earth way you've shared some of that story today. And I think that just that just really sums up the whole project and what it's about, just normal people looking after each other and trying to support each other. And, you know, I think I think as a, as a, as a world, we need to get a bit a bit closer to that and a bit more understanding that we're all kind of in it together. So thanks for being so honest and open today. It's been really brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Right. So thank you all our listeners. Thank you as always for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this, check out some other podcasts on YouTube, Spotify, all the other podcast providers, etc. cetera. Um, go on Twitter on Taft Talks, have a tweet and let us know your thoughts. Um, but for now I will hand you over to the collective intellect of Paul H. Wayne <laughs> and Paul D to leave you with a final thought. On each. Don't be on you, Todd. It's one of mine. Uh, my final thought in this current situation, please don't compare yourself to anybody else because I feel that's like self-destructive. Um, someone saying there's someone worse off than you, your situation is your situation. You don't need any guilt anything by comparing yourself to anybody else so your situations your situation don't you know hold on to that because I think friends and family sometimes can give us the wrong information because if I'm feeling bad and someone goes well is someone worse off than you I think well now I feel even worse <laughs> so yeah you know you're in this current situation your situation's yours don't compare yourself to anybody else yeah uh, just it's okay not to be okay um, stay positive Keep the faith and uh, yeah. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. I, I mean, like Wayne said, just um, don't put yourself down. If you do have a bad day, you know what I mean? Um, just keep going. Just keep going. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah. Little changes. 